UCU uh, 10 colleges across the country are on strike of the pay and conditions. We're here today outside of the AOC, the employer organisation that runs uh, the sector. haven't been given a pay rise since back in 2017 and even then that was just three percent. They have made a recommendation of one percent this year. That's not even being implemented at the moment. The average FE lecturer earns £9,000 a year less than the average school teacher. This has been going on for several years now, you know, kicking the can down the road. The level of anger over this has boiled up to the point we're now taking industrial action. <laughs> The biggest thing I think that we're on strike about is our new um, observation policy. We used to have observational policies where your manager would come in, but the quality team would limit it to maybe one or twice a year maximum that would come and visit you. And even then it was like 10, 15 minutes. Now your actual manager has to do one hour a week. So every two to three weeks, my manager's coming in to visit one of my lessons. They have a new mantra now, which is anytime, any class, any manager. It's a bully's charter is how we see it, because there is no limit to the amount of times that managers will be allowed to come into or be permitted to come into classrooms to observe what's going on in a classroom. We have some managers that maybe will use this policy um, as a way of, say, micromanaging their staff, which is bullying, which is a way of being able to harass their workers. And with the new policy, say if you have three students who are five minutes late, your teacher automatically fails that observation. If you have people that are off sick, especially if they're due to COVID, again, your teacher fails that part of the observation because there's just no one in the classroom, even though it's beyond their control. It doesn't matter if they talk to the student online and sending them work, they weren't physically in the classroom, so you do come up with capabilities for not being able to do your job. To be the biggest college in London, if we allow this, our college is going to be everywhere, so you look out, your college will be next. <laughs> The amount of extra jobs and day-to-day -day activities that we have to do has increased exponentially over the last few years. It feels like you're doing three or four different jobs. You had learning mentors in the past, you have student welfare officers, you have additional learning support, which were a lifeline to support students to um, get through the courses. The introduction of, of blended learning, of you know, IT systems and all the rest of it means that things that were previously done uh, by other people, admin staff, or were done in different ways and now just routinely required of us at the drop of a hat. The more time we spend doing admin, the less time we have to do what we should be doing, which is teaching. The reliance on technology and the increase in digital technology and the hurdles and mixing private life with work life, is um, that's, that's why I personally feel I'm out here today. The restructuring since December, starting with management, slashing lots of management and moving other managers around, that increases non-teaching and learning of workload. When I say teaching and learning, I mean brain, voice, hands, pen, student. One of the demands that we're making is actually there should be an increase in, in uh, admin staff employed to do exactly the kind of things that we are now being routinely asked to do. Royal CEO, too much money, time to go. Pay hey, your teachers what you owe, now, now, now. We're working in a very demanding sector. FE is under threat, it's underfunded. It, we need more money from the government. We can't pretend that we're not in 2021 and that we don't have one of the most vicious, uh, ideologically opposed to education, Tory governments that I've ever seen in my lifetime and that we have a, a cadre of managers, whether it's in further education colleges or universities who have absolutely no courage to push back against a government that is hostile to the very idea of education. We have a mantra in, in education which is no students left behind. You can see chipping away at all sorts of things that we thought of as being critical to providing education for working class communities. There are higher priorities here in terms of finance and money. We look at the way students have been treated during the pandemic, uh, whether that's at college, 
um, are at university where they were lured back to campus because the university system couldn't exist without fees and rent. We've just seen the Education Select Committee chair talking about how every piece of education that a student does wants to have a purpose for work, as if education is just a conveyor belt to the labour market, as if it doesn't enrich, as if it doesn't emancipate. the industrial action ballots. We got 62% across the board, so we got well into the 70%, so this is a huge mandate. The strike is solid and we've got full support across our members. There isn't a single member here that isn't on strike. The union is providing strike pay from day one. And we have a the strike fund where we can supplement that if people are genuinely in hardship. So there's no financial reason why anybody needs to cross a big line. At the end of the day, as much as managers like to think that staff, is, staff are a problem, Staff's working conditions are students' learning conditions. The two are inseparable. I went to an FE college when I was 16, and I might have not have had the same opportunities that some people had had. I certainly wouldn't have been able to go to a, a sixth form or a private school. And without those FE workers believing in me, I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing now, which is teach trade union education. I was feeling pretty down and pretty, pretty depressed, you know, and thinking, where do we even go from here? But to be here is like an injection of positivity and I'm really, really glad to be here. So keep up the absolutely excellent work and the National Union are behind you all the way. So solidarity to everyone here.